Let's put our science knowledge of the scientific method to a realistic example that includes some of the t terms um, that you'll need to understand. Okay, John watches his grandmother bake a bread, a loaf of bread. He asks his grandmother what makes the bread rise. She explains that yeasts release a gas as it feeds on the sugar. So then John wonders if the amount of sugar used would affect the size of the bread loaf. So that is his question. Will the amount of sugar affect the size of the bread loaf? Be careful here. There's two ways to use the word effect. It's with There's one with an E and there's one with an A. And Mrs. Pico probably has gone over this with you. Effect is usually a noun and effect is a verb. For example, you might make the title of your project the effect of sugar amounts on the rising of bread. At that point, the E is used as a noun. The A, how does sugar affect the rising loaf of bread? The A is used as a verb, so be careful of that. I will help you through that. All right, so John researches baking, he researches fermentation, and he tries to come up with a way to test his question. He keeps all of his information on this topic in a journal, and we're going to use our notebooks for that. Your notebook is your journal. So he talks with his teacher, and she gives him an experimental design diagram to help him set up his investigation. I will be giving you many papers to help you set up your own investigation. And when we do investigations in class, I will also give you those. This is a sample of what his teacher gave him. Okay, I'll give you something that looks similar to that. So he comes up with a hypothesis and he writes that hypothesis in an if-then statement. If more sugar is added, then the bread will rise higher. So if you look at this, can you identify is sugar being added the independent variable or the dependent variable? Does he have control over how much sugar he adds? Yes, he does. Therefore, the sugar being added is the independent variable, and the, how high the bread rises is the dependent variable. It depends on the sugar. A hypothesis is an educated guess about the relationship between the independent and dependent variables. These variables will be defined in the next few slides. Do you know the difference between the independent and dependent variables? An independent or manipulated variable is the factor that's intentionally varied or intentionally changed by the person doing the experiment. In this case, it would be you. In this example, it would be John. So John is going to use 25 grams, 50 grams, 100 grams, 250 grams, and 500 grams of sugar in his experiment. The dependent variable or responding variable is the factor that may change as a result of the changes made in the independent variable. So it depends, the dependent depends upon the independent variable. We will definitely see this in class. In this case, it would be the size of the loaf of bread. So his teacher helps him come up with a procedure and a list of the needed materials. She discusses with John how to determine the, con the control group. The control group is usually the amount that always works, that we always know is going to work. So in this case, he's going to use the amount that grandma has always used. And I believe that's 50 grams. Let's see. In a scientific experiment, the control is the group that serves as the standard of comparison. The one that he knows usually works. That's the control group. The control group may be a no treatment or an experimenter selected group. The control group is exposed to the same condi conditions as the experimental group, except for the variable being tested. So everything else needs to be controlled and needs to stay the same. 
except for the amount of sugar that he's adding. All experiments should have a control group. And here it states what I was just saying. Um, because his grandmother always used 50 grams of sugar in her recipe, John is going to use that amount in his control group. John's teacher reminds him to keep all other factors constant. So the um, temperature of the oven should be constant. The type of pan that he used should be constant. The amount of all of the other ingredients should be exactly the same. The, content, the constants in an experiment are all the factors that the experimenter ex attempts to keep the same. Can you think of some constants in this experiment? I just gave you some examples. They might include the bread recipe, the oven used, the rise time, the brand of ingredients, the cooking time, the type of pan, the air temperature and humidity, where the bread was rising, oven temperature, and the age of the yeast. Okay, at this time, John writes out his, his procedure for his experiment along with the materials list in his journal. He has both of these checked by his teacher where she checks for any safety concerns. So before you go on with your procedure, make sure that there are no safety concerns. And since you are doing this at home, please make sure that your parents are on board with what you are doing and they are monitoring um, safety as well. The trials. As I mentioned, we are going to go um, by the means of doing three trials. You should conduct the experiment three different times or have three groups of the experiment going on at once. John is going to test his sugar variable three times as well. So he comes up with a table that he can use to record his data and he gets his materials together and carries out his experiment. Here are the results that he came up with. What he found is that the average size of the bread was the largest with the control group. But he wonders if something could happen between 50 and 100. So I think he's going to try 75 grams of sugar. He, this just states that he noticed that his control group worked the best, but not that much better than the 100 grams. So he's going to reject his hypothesis and try again. He's going to test now 50, 60, let's see what it says here. He's going to test out 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. You can now see that the best amount of sugar was 70 grams because it made the largest loaf. So he finds that 70 grams of sugar produces the largest loaf and his new hypothesis is now accepted. He's going to communicate the results to his grandmother, and he's also going to present it to his science class. So what I want you to do is observe the world around you and come up with a question to answer using the scientific method for your science fair.